GPT-5. When are we going to see this? Probably sometime this summer. We've cracked reasoning in the models. We have some new technology that could just do self-driving for standard cars way better than any current approach has worked. Do you think that's possible that we have like crazy super intelligence that's like 400 IQ? I totally think that's possible. Sam Altman has been everywhere lately, hitting up podcasts and dropping bombshells. He's talking about everything from Meta trying to steal open AI researchers with jaw-dropping offers. We're talking $100 million plus dollars to when we can expect GPT-5, and even how AI might start discovering brand new science. I've grabbed the most epic moments from all these interviews, and we're gonna break them down together. But before we dive in, do your part. Smash that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the latest drops in AI and tech. This next conversation, it's a special one. Sam Altman joins his own brother, Jack Altman, on Jack's podcast. Yup, same last name, same gene pool, different questions. Let's go. Speaking of social, actually, can we can, we, can I ask you about the whole uh, meta scale? Thing? Of course. So uh, what's, the, what's the situation there? Look, I've, I've heard that meta thinks of us as their biggest competitor. And, you know, I think it is rational for them to keep trying. Their current AI efforts have not worked as well as they've hoped and so here's the deal meta sees open ai as the competition but it's not just meta google microsoft amazon all of them are staring straight at open ai like it's the final boss why because open ai isn't just building killer models they're moving into hardware hello johnny ive collab and consumer apps trying to become the ai destination for everyone and honestly they're kind of crushing it Meanwhile, Meta has been pushing its own AI family, the Llama 4 models. They're solid, but still not on OpenAI's level. Despite all the billions spent on GPUs, training, post-training, and hearing top researchers, Zuck wants the best, and he hasn't gotten it yet. So what's he doing? Pulling out all the stops. One wild move. Meta's teaming up with Scale AI and trying to bring Alexander Wang, yep, the CEO, on board to lead a superintelligence dream team. And here's the craziest part. Sam Altman reveals that Meta has been offering OpenAI researchers over $100 million just to jump ship. That's not salary, that's just bonus. A signing bonus, that's how intense this battle has become. Zuck is in full beast mode. If one plan doesn't work, he'll try another again and again until something clicks. Let's roll that clip. You know, I think it is rational for them to keep trying. Their current AI efforts have not worked as well as they've hoped, and... I respect like being aggressive and continuing to try new things. And and I and I, again, given that I think this is like rational, I expect that if this one doesn't work out, they'll keep trying new ones after that. I remember once hearing Zuck talk about how, you know, Google in the early days of Facebook, it was rational for them to try social, even though it was like clear to people at at Facebook that that was not going to work. And I feel a little bit similar here. But they started making these like giant offers to. Uh, you know, a lot of people on our team, mm -hmm. um, you know, like $100 million signing bonuses, more than that comp per year. This is crazy. Uh, and I'm actually, it is crazy. I'm really happy that at least so far, uh, none of our best people have decided to take them up on that. I think that people sort of look at the two paths and say, all right, OpenAI has got a really good shot, a much better shot at actually delivering on super intelligence uh, and also may eventually be the more valuable company. But I think the strategy of a ton of upfront guaranteed comp. And that being the reason you tell someone to join, like really the degree to which they're focusing on that and not the work and not the mission. Um, I don't think that's going to set up a great culture. Uh, yup, you heard that right. Meta is tossing out 100 million plus dollars bonuses to lure open AI researchers. And that doesn't even include the crazy comp packages on top. But here's the thing, Sam Altman isn't impressed. He says that kind of money war doesn't build a great culture. In Silicon Valley, the real legends, engineers, researchers, founders, they don't join for just cash. They join to solve the hardest problems with the smartest people on the biggest missions. And here's a mic drop moment. Sam straight up says if OpenAI succeeds, it'll be more valuable than Meta. And when that happens, his team will walk away with even bigger rewards than Zucks offers. Still, $100 million is no joke, that's life-changing. And yet, no one's left open AI, not one. That tells you everything about the mission they're on. This is the real AI talent war. And if you're wondering how you can get a piece of the billions Zuck is throwing around for AI researchers, maybe it's time to learn Python. 
The thing that I think will be the most impactful on that five to 10 year time frame is AI will actually discover new science. And this is a crazy claim to make, but I think it is true. And if it is correct, then over time, I think that will dwarf everything else. Why do you think it'll discover new science? Well, I think we've cracked reasoning in the models. We have a long way to go, but I think we know what to do. And, you know, O3 is already like pretty smart. You hear people say like, wow, this is like a good PhD. What does it mean to crack reasoning? The models can now do the kind of reasoning in a particular domain you'd expect a PhD in that field to be able to do. In some sense, we're like, oh, okay, the AIs are like a top competitive programmer in the world now. Or AIs can get like a top score on the world's hardest math competitions. Or AIs can like, you know, do problems that I'd expect an expert PhD on my PhD in my field to do. And we're like not that impressed. It's crazy. In the next clip, Sam Altman dives into something mind-blowing, AI discovering new science. This isn't some sci-fi theory anymore. It's already happening. Take Google's Alpha Evolve project. It found a 1% boost in infrastructure efficiency. That may sound small, but at Google scale, that's billions saved. And that's just the start. Altman believes we're heading into an era where AI becomes a scientific partner, uncovering breakthroughs we couldn't reach alone. Let's roll the clip and prepare to have your brain stretched. Did the way reasoning happen, happen the way you thought it would happen? Like often has happened in the history of OpenAI, sometime, pretty often, the dumbest first approach turns out to work. Hmm. So I don't think I should be surprised by that anymore. And yet it's a, like a little surprising each time. So reasoning will lead to science going faster or just new stuff or both? Both. I, I mean, you already hear scientists who say they're faster with AI. Like we don't have AI maybe autonomously doing science, but if a human scientist is three times as productive using O3, that's still a pretty big deal. Yeah. And then as that keeps going and the AI can like autonomously do some science. It now here where it gets juicy, Sam starts hinting at humanoid robots. OpenAI hasn't said anything official yet, but Altman talks like it's already in the works. And when you connect the dots, it makes sense. They're building a secret device with Johnny Ive's hardware startup. They've acquired Windsurf for coding. They're launching consumer apps. Basically, OpenAI is doing everything right now. Robots might be the next big leap. And if it's coming from OpenAI, you know it won't be ordinary. Let's hear what Sam has to say. What about like moving physical things around? Behind, but I think we'll get there. Uh, for example, I think we have some new technology that could just do self-driving for standard cars way better than any current approach has worked. Hmm. And that might not be quite what you meant by like no, humanoid is. robots. Yeah. But if our AI techniques can like really go drive a car, that's still pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Sam Altman says we could see humanoid robots walking down the street doing real jobs in just five to 10 years. Yeah, it sounds wild, maybe a bit optimistic, but also not that far off. With how fast AI and robotics are evolving, that timeline might actually be on point. Humanoid robots are the dream, obviously. I really care about that. Uh, I think we will get there eventually. It's been like a hard mechanical engineering challenge. That's more the issue? No, the, both things are hard, but like even if we had the perfect brain right now, I don't think we have the body yet. Mm. Um, we, we actually, very early on in open AI, we used to work on this robotic hand. And it was hard for all the wrong reasons. Like the thing just broke all the time. The simulator was like a little bit off. Wow. But you know, we'll get there. Yeah. I think five to 10 years, we'll have great humanoid robots. Yeah. Like amazing. And they'll just like walk down the street, be doing stuff. All right. Now we're diving into something fresh. The brand new open AI podcast hosted by Andrew Main, a former open AI insider. He sat down with Sam Altman and yep, he dropped a sneaky hint about GPT-5. Want to know when it's coming. Let's take a look. What is the time frame for GPT-5? When are we going to see this? Probably sometime this summer. Right. Um, I don't know exactly when. One thing that we go back and forth on is how much are we supposed to like turn up the big number on new models versus what we did with GPT-4.0, oh, which is just better and better and better and better. Okay, it was a blink and you miss it kind of moment. But here's the big takeaway. GPT-5 is probably dropping this summer. Even bigger than the date, the direction. These next-gen models, GPT-5, GPT-6, will be Omni models. No more guessing between GPT-4.0, O3 Mini, or whatever. You just give it your prompt, and the model figures out the best response, best quality, best price, automatically. Seamless, smart, and optimized. Let's roll the clip. It means we need to, like, 
bifurcate the model tree. Great, even more complicated names. I hope we don't have to do that. <laughs> I am excited to just get to GPT-5 and yeah. GPT-6. And I think that'll be easier for people to use. And you won't have to think, do I want, you know, 04 mini high or right. 03 or 4? Like, 04 mini high is what I used to code. When yeah. I want to have a conversation, it's 03. I think we will be out of that whole mess soon. Of course, it wouldn't be a Sam Altman interview without a jab at Elon Musk. Sam accuses Elon of using his political pull to block OpenAI from a major deal, claiming he was trying to unfairly compete using backdoor influence. Let's hear what he said. I had said, I think also externally, but at least internally after the election that I didn't think Elon was going to abuse his power in the government to unfairly compete. And I regret to say I was wrong about that. I mean, I don't like being wrong in general, but mostly right. I just think it's really unfortunate for the country that he would do these things. And I didn't think, I genuinely didn't think he was going to. Um, I'm grateful that the administration has really done the right thing and stuck up to that kind of behavior. Um, but yeah, it sucks. So what's all this Musk Altman drama about? Here, what I found, OpenAI with Oracle and SoftBank was working on a massive AI infrastructure project called Stargate in partnership with G42 in the UAE. When Musk found out that his company, XAI, wasn't included, he allegedly pressured UAE officials, hinting that the deal wouldn't get White House approval unless XAI was added. That's what Altman is likely referring to, and even with the pushback, the White House eventually approved the project anyway. Altman's final words on Musk, he wishes Elon wasn't so zero-sum, as in if OpenAI wins, XAI doesn't have to lose. But clearly, in Elon's world, it's winner-takes-all. Next up, Sam Altman's personal definition of superintelligence, and it goes way beyond AGI. Let's get into it. Maybe a better question is, what will it take for something I would call superintelligence? Okay. Um, if we had a system that was capable of either doing autonomous discovery of new science or greatly increasing the capability of people using the tool to discover new science, um, that would feel like kind of almost definitionally super intelligence to me and be a wonderful thing for the world, I think. I liked Sam's definition of super intelligence, not saying I fully agree just yet, still chewing on it, but it's definitely an interesting way to think about what comes after AGI. Now let's talk about OpenAI's hardware play. There are some juicy clues in what Sam said about their collab with legendary designer Johnny Ive. Real hardware, real world impact. Let's break it down. OpenAI just announced that you guys are building hardware. You had the video with you and Johnny Ive talking about you guys have been talking about and collaborating for a couple of years. Uh, obviously you can't, I mean, well, I could ask you, is, is, is it on you right now? No, it is not. All right. It's going to be a while. Okay. Um, we're going to try to do something at like a crazy high level of quality. And that, okay. that does not come fast. But computers, software and hardware, just the way we think of current computers, were designed for a world without AI. And now we're in like a very different world. And what you want out of hardware and software is changing quite rapidly. Um, you might want something that is way more aware of its environment that has way more context in your life. You might want to interact with it in a different way than like typing and looking at a screen. And we've been exploring that for a while and we've got a couple of ideas we're really quite excited about. Um, I think it will take time for people to get used to what it means to use a computer in this kind of a world because uh, it is so different now. But if you like really trusted an AI to understand all the context of your life and your question and make good judgments on your behalf where you could like have it sit in a meeting listen to the whole meeting know what it was like allowed to share with who and what it shouldn't share with anyone and you know kind of what your preferences would be and then you ask it one question and you trust that it's going to go do the right follow-ups with the right people and do like you can then imagine a totally different kind of how you use a computer to get done what you want. Sam clearly wants his iPhone 2007 moment, 
that iconic launch that changes everything. And honestly, with OpenAI as the brain and Johnny Ive as the design wizard, he's in a strong spot to pull it off. But here's the twist. He also hinted that people might need time to get used to this new way of interacting with AI. And that doesn't sound like an iPhone moment. Remember the first iPhone? No manual needed. It just clicked. You could flick, tap, type. Even a three-year-old could figure it out in seconds. That's what made it magical. But this new AI device? It might not be that intuitive. And that raises a big question. What is this thing actually going to look like? My guess? Not a screen-heavy device. Something you carry, not wear. It'll have eyes, cameras, ears, mics, and a voice speaker. Super portable, super personal, almost like a digital sidekick. But will it feel natural? Will it be fun to use? That's the challenge. Let me know what you think it'll look like. Drop your predictions in the comments. So that's it. Sam Altman dropped bomb after bomb, shots at Meta, shots at Elon, massive GPT-5 leaks, super intelligence talk, and a peek into the future of AI hardware. This was one of the most revealing weeks in AI, and I'm glad we got to break it all down together. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button, subscribe for more No BS AI insights, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay curious, stay sharp.